Okay, we are moving on. We're still in unit four, but we're going to talk about isosceles and equilateral triangles a little more in depth. Okay, so if we're talking about specifically an isosceles triangle, it, here's a diagram of it, triangle ABC, and it's an isosceles triangle because you notice it has two congruent sides. So the two congruent sides are what we're going to call legs. Okay, the angle where the legs intersect, which in this case would be B, so if this is a leg and this is a leg, where they intersect would be B, okay, that angle is called the vertex angle. The opposite sides of the vertex angle, which would be opposite of angle B, would be AC, and that is what they're going to call as the base. So opposite the vertex angle is always the base. The angles along the base, in this case A and C, those are called base angles. Okay, So the angles that connect the base are called base angles. All right, so the isosceles triangle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite that are congruent. So just as we talked about, if AB is congruent to BC, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So angle 2 would be congruent to angle 3, or angle AC would be congruent to, or A would be congruent to angle C. So we can say if AB is congruent to BC, then angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay. They're opposite the congruent sides. Are opposite the congruent angles is opposite the congruent sides. They're going to be equal to each other. All right. So if we flip that around and we do the converse of that statement, if two angles of the triangle are congruent, so say if this angle is congruent to this angle, so if angle A is congruent to angle C, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Well, opposite of angle C is AB, and opposite of angle A is BC. Okay. Alright, so let's practice those theorems. I'll leave those where we can see them. So we're going to find the direction of each, or the measure of each angle. Okay, so we're finding J and K. Okay, so if you notice, it is an isosceles triangle because JK and KL are congruent, which means if these two sides are congruent, these two angles are congruent. That's what the isosceles triangle theorem says. So if I know angle L is 68, then I know angle J is also 68 degrees. Okay, So then I have to figure out how am I going to find the measure of angle K. Well, we know that all the angles in a triangle add to 180. So if I do 180 and I minus angle J that I just found, and I minus angle L, which I was given, so I minus the two angles I know, what is left? is going to be my measure of angle K. All three angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. Okay. All right, so move on to the next example, number two. We have triangle DCE, all right, and all we know is angle D is 106, but we do know that this angle, or this side and this side are congruent, which means the angles opposite those sides are congruent, so those two angles are congruent. So, there's no congruent angle with 106, but we can still use the 106 to help us. So what I do know is all three angles in a triangle add to 180. And so if I take the 106 away, I'll be left with 74. Now, neither C nor E equals 74, but what that means is 74 degrees is left to split equally to angle C and E. So angle C and E are the same measure. But together, they have to equal 74. That's the only degrees left in that triangle. So what I can do is I can do then 74 divided by 2, because I have to split it equally two ways to the congruent angles, and I will get 37. So these two both have to be 37. And you can check your answers by adding up your angles. 37 plus 37 plus 106 should be 180, and it is. Okay. Let's look at angle 3. Okay. They didn't tell us it was an isosceles triangle by using the um, segment markings, but they did tell us that X and Z are both 77, which means this angle is equal to this angle, Okay, which means that the side then is equal to this by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. 
Okay, if you have two congruent angles in a triangle, then the two sides opposite those congruent angles have to be equal. So that means this side is also 12 centimeters, which is great because they actually asked me for YZ. So I can say 12 centimeters. We are asked to find then the measure of angle Y. Well, I know that all the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. I've used up 77 degrees with angle X, and I've used up 77 degrees with angle Z. And if I subtract those from 180, I am left with 26 degrees is left for angle Y. So let's add a little algebra into it. Same kind of concept. Um, but we're going to find the value of each variable, so we're just looking for x this time. But if you notice, this is an isosceles triangle. This side is equal to this side as they marked it, meaning this angle is equal to this angle. Okay. So since those angles have to be congruent, I will actually set those values equal to each other. So 5x plus 9 is equal to 8x minus 30. All right. And so then I will just have to solve accordingly. And so I will minus 5x from both sides, so that I have 9 equals 3x minus 30. I'll add 30 to both sides, so that I have 39 is equal to 3x. I'll divide both sides by 3, so that I get x is equal to 13. Okay. Um, 5 would be done the same way. Since it's an isosceles triangle, you would set the two congruent angles equal to each other and solve. If you need extra practice, you can go back and do number five, but you don't have to do number five. All right. Uh, let's do number six. It's a little different because they didn't tell me my two sides were equal. They told me these two angles are equal. So these would be my base angles, and they are congruent, which means the side opposite of these two angles have to be congruent. So this is equal to this. Okay. So I will actually set the sides equal to each other this time instead of the angles, but they still have to be equal. And so then I'll solve this using our good algebra skills. I'll minus 5x from both sides. So I will have 7 is equal to 18x. Oh, that's a 15. 7 is equal to 8x. Minus 17. And then I'll add 17 to both sides. So that I will get 24 is equal to 8x. Divide both sides by 8. And I will get x is equal to 3. And 7 is done similarly. You know those base angles are equal since they're both 74. Therefore, the sides opposite of them have to also be equal. And again, if you need extra practice, you can do number 7, but you don't have to do number 7. All right, let's move on to look at number 8. Okay, so they didn't draw us a diagram. We have all this information, so let's kind of break down the information. So we have triangle RST. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to draw a triangle, and I'm going to label it R. S and T. Okay, I know too that RT is congruent to ST, so this RT is congruent to ST. So I have this information, okay? All right, meaning based off our previous theorem that the angles opposite those two angles or those two sides have to be equal, All right? I also know the measure of angle R is 9x plus 2, so this one here is 9x plus 2, and then I know angle S is 13x minus 18, if I can squeeze that in there. And angle 2, I'm going to just draw an arrow because I don't want to squish it in there, is 17x plus 1. Okay, so my two congruent angles, if you label everything correctly, you can see that angle S and angle R are going to be congruent to each other. And that would mean 13x minus 18 is going to be equal to 9x plus 2. So angle S has to be equal to angle R. Okay, because it's an isosceles triangle, it's going to have two congruent angles. And I can solve that. If I can find x, then I'll be able to answer this part of the question and this part of the question. So I'll minus 9x from both sides so that I have 4x minus 18 is equal to 2. I'll add 18 to both sides so that I get 4x is equal to 20. I'll divide both sides by 4 so that I get x is equal to 5. And that is one of the things I was asked for. So then I need to go find the measure of angle R, the measure of angle S, and the measure of angle T, which they gave us equations for. So all I have to do is go plug in. So if I look up at the problem, the equation for angle R is 9x plus 2 
So in place of x, I'm going to put 5. So 9 times 5 plus 2. And 9 times 5 plus 2 is equal to 47. All right. And then I'll do the same thing with s. I'll do 13. Instead of x, I'll put 5 minus 18. And 13 times 5 minus 18 is also 47. And that should be, because you look at our diagram that we drew with the information we added into it from the um, description of the triangle, those should be the same measure. And so in the measure of angle T, you could either do 180 minus 47 minus 47, or we can plug it into the equation. 17 times 5 plus 1 is equal to 86. Okay? And you can check your answer by 47 plus 47 plus 86 should add to 180. All right, let's look at number 9. Okay. We have triangle DEF, so I'm going to draw a triangle, okay, and I will label then the vertices D, E, and F, and they told me that angle D is congruent to angle E, okay, which means then the side opposite of D is congruent to the side opposite of E. So we have this isosceles triangle. All right. And so I also know that DE is X plus 4. And I know that EF is 4X minus 8. And I know that DF is 7X minus 35. And we're going to do the same type of problem where we find X and find the measure of each side this time. I like to underline in my directions. Okay, so the two sides that are congruent would be the sides opposite of angle D and the side opposite of angle E. Opposite of D is 4x minus 8 is equal to the side opposite of E, which is 7x minus 35. And you can see that in the diagram. And I'll solve that. So I'll minus 4x from both sides. So that I have negative 8 is equal to 3x minus 35. I will add... 35 to both sides so that I have 27 is equal to 3x. And divide both sides by 3 so that I get x is equal to 9. Then I'll find the equation for DE. Find a value for DE, a value for EF, and a value for DF. Now, a reminder, Sides don't ever have to add to 180. That only works for angles. So we can't use that method to check our answer here. Okay, but we do know that we have two congruent sides, that um, EF and DF should be the same value. So we can look for that as we solve for this. All right. So DE has the equation X plus 4, but in place of X, I'm going to put 9. So 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. And then for EF, I have the equation 4x minus 8, so I'll do 4 times 9 minus 8, which will leave me with 28. And then DF has the equation of 7x, so 7 times 9 minus 35. And when I do that, I get 28. And that should be true because these two should be equal to each other according to our diagram. All right. Um, number 10 is just like number 8. Um, you'll draw it, you'll end up with an isosceles triangle, and you'll be able to find your angles by setting some of them equal to each other and plugging them in. But if you need extra practice, that's a good one to go do. Moving on to equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles are just very, very special equilateral triangles. A triangle is only an equilateral if and only if it is equiangular. Okay, it has to be both. So that means if I have all my sides, then all my angles are equal. And if and only if is a great statement because it means I can read it in reverse. So if I have equal angles, then I also have equal sides. Okay. All right, so if the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B and the measure of angle C, then all three of my sides, A, B, is equal to B, C. If it's equal, I don't need the marking on top, is equal to A, C or C, A. Okay. And then if I have AB is equal to BC is equal to CA, then that means those angles are equal. Opposite of angle AB, um, all those sides are going to be equal to each other. We'll put them in alphabetical order if we want. Uh, 
But again, it, it works just like isosceles triangle. The side opposite of a congruent angle has to be congruent. These just happen to all be congruent. So if we look at number 11, we have this measure here. So let's find angle C first. It'll help us classify it. Um, if I have 180 degrees total in a triangle and I've used up 60 for angle A and I've used up 60 for angle B, what's less should be angle C, which is also 60, meaning that this angle, this angle, and this angle equal. So it's an equilateral triangle, which means then this side is equal, this side is equal to this side. So if AB is 9 foot, BC is 9 foot, and if BC is 9 foot, then AC is 9 foot. Okay. So equilateral triangles work that. All equilateral triangles have to have a measure of 60, and here's why. So if we look at number 12 then, it's actually asking us for the angles. If I know all of these are 24 centimeters, but it didn't actually ask me for that. But what I do know is all of these angles are equal. So what I know is all the angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. And I have three equal angles, which means that 180 has to be split equally three ways. So if I'm splitting something equally, I divide it by how many ways I'm splitting it. So I'm going to divide by 180 by 3, leaving me with 60. So all three of those angles are 60. That works for every equilateral triangle that you will ever see. All the angles in an equilateral triangle have to be 60 because 180 has to be split equally. So 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. We'll do this last example together. If triangle PQR is an equilateral triangle, we're going to solve for both X and Y. So they're telling us it's equilateral. So because of that, I know angle P, angle Q, and angle R are all equal. I know that side PR, PQ, and QR are all equal. Okay, so we just have to kind of make up a plan to find our values. So... We find x first. Well, again, if you use angle 12 to help you with angle 3, all of these angles are 60 degrees because it's an equilateral triangle. That is why they're all 60 degrees. So I know then that 7x minus 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So I can add 3 to both sides. Divide by 7 so that I get x is equal to 9. Now, for the other one, all three of those sides are equal, and all three have a Y, so we can set any pair of them equal to each other, and it doesn't matter which ones you do. You just can kind of make a choice as to what you want to do. Um, why don't we set 14Y minus 59 is equal to 9Y plus 1? Uh, but it, it doesn't matter as long as you're setting any of those three sides equal to each other. Since they all have the same variables, it wouldn't matter. So if I wanted to do um, 14y minus 59 equals 11y minus 23, that would be okay. If I wanted to do 11y minus 23 equals 9y plus 1, I could do that. That would also be okay. Um, so it's kind of up to you. And if you wanted to do that on your own and compare it, you would end up with the same value as long as your algebra was correct. So I'm going to solve this equation of minus 9y from both sides. And I will be left with 5y minus 59 is equal to 1. Okay, I will add 59 to both sides so that I have 5y is equal to 60. I'll divide both sides by 5 so that I get y is equal to 12.